Welcome to night two of the Northern Summer Nationals at Oshwikin Speedway. Tonight, once again, we have the 360 cubic inch dirt sprint cars, great engine sprint cars, Thunderstocks, and Race of Champions dirt sportsmen. And if it's anything like the action we saw last night, you're going to be in for a great show. I'm Adam Ross. Joining me is Greg Kalnan. And Greg, night two of this event should be fantastic. Oh, it should. We had plenty of cars last night. We expect the same again tonight, even though we have three different divisions in the house and the track conditions should be different. Last night we had a lot of moisture, a lot of rain in that track and made it fast and made it chunky. But tonight I think we're going to see some dry slick. So drivers are going to have to pedal the cars a little bit more than they did last night. With the rain we had in the area yesterday, it made for a heavy racetrack, which meant the drivers could put the hammer down and try to drive through it. They didn't all manage to do that. We destroyed some race cars last night, and the action was intense. We're going to see more of that tonight, and one of the invaders brought in. We've got Tony Stewart, we've got Christopher Bell, and we've got Rico Abreu, and it was Abreu who took the win last night in convincing fashion. Yeah, he was the star last night on All North Racing powered by Pinty's. Great run by Rico Abreu, but I think it was Christopher Bell that maybe had the race won until that right rear went away on his car. I think he'll be back for redemption here tonight. Enjoy tonight's show. It's about to get exciting on MAV TV Canada. All North Racing is brought to you by Pinty's Delicious Foods, making great food fun. Mr. Transmission, Canada's transmission and technology experts. Take Mr. Love, friend of mine. It's great to be back at one of my favorite dirt tracks. Do you just say that everywhere you go? Do you really mean it? No, you can, you can ask a lot of people in the States. This is just one place that I think when you win your first World of Outlaws race at a certain track, that's probably going to be one of your favorite racetracks all the time. So uh, I'm glad to finally be back here again. You know, Tony, I was really honored after the driver's meeting. You came up and pulled me aside and said, Glenn and the team and everything, just do it right. Maybe let the, some of the fans know who are here every week your comments and what your real thoughts are about what you see from us from afar. Well, I got to know Glenn a long time ago, and the thing about Glenn, he's passionate about everything he does, and whatever he does, he does it 100%. So, uh, you know, you guys just think outside the box, which is fun. Uh, that's, that's what we like to see when we go racing is uh, there's a lot of promoters that just host races, and then there's guys like you guys that, that host events, and that's what, that's what this sport needs. So, uh, you know, it's a great venue. Um, I'm jealous of Glenn because my house isn't anywhere near my racetrack. I'm three hours from my racetrack. He gets to walk about 300 feet and he's at his racetrack. But uh, it, that's what's fun about coming back here. It's just, uh, you know, from the time we got to the to the pit shack and saw the ladies in the pit shack, that's uh, they, they treat you like your family. Like I said, we haven't been here for seven years and it was, uh, you know, the feeling was like we hadn't been here for a month. So uh, that's what makes it special. They were trying to get close to you and you just wanted to rub up Glenn's dog, Blue, who was a cutie pie. So. Uh, <laughs> How about it, fans? How cool is to have Tony Stewart here with us tonight again? Tony, amazing. I know a lot of these fans, as I'm going around the campground, have told me they are getting ready for next week at Eldora. Of course, Kings Royal last week, the big dirt derby coming up for NASCAR. Uh, you told me you get a lot more gray, kind of like me, the weeks leading up to this. What's your thoughts leading up to next week? Well, I'm excited that we got a weekend off in between. Normally, we have the, the Kings Royal that finishes on Saturday, and uh, on Monday, the, the NASCAR people are starting to roll in to start on Tuesday. So uh, it's nice that we have a week break in between, and uh, can everybody can catch their breath. I mean, we started running uh, Wednesday last week at Eldora, so four straight nights, and uh, paid Brad Sweet $175,000 for winning on Saturday night, so that was pretty cool. And uh, we got a weekend off, and then we'll get ready for the trucks. So uh, I think we just keep kind of refining what we do there. And uh, last year, it was kind of fun because less was more last year when it came to the track prep. So uh, hopefully we can get it right again this year. Now you gave us heck after the hot laps for what was going on back there. Are you happy with what you see now? Yeah, and you know, it's fun because Glenn came down and he was telling us uh, what he was aiming for. And the, the fun part was exactly, you know, he knew exactly what the heat races were going to be like. And it were cars on the bottom, cars on the top, and they were running the same speed. So it's a... Uh, that's home field advantage when you got the owner knows exactly what the track's going to do like that and, and when he can make it racy like that with two lines. So, uh, you know, it's got slick in the middle and there's a good bottom and there's a good top. So uh, can't ask for anything more than that. Thanks so much, Tony. Uh, like I tell all our friends, make sure you talk to us for the right reasons because you're here, not over there in a pile. Yeah, exactly. So uh, hopefully we can stay down here and uh, save us a spot after 30 more laps, I hope. How about it, folks? Tony Stewart, make some noise. 
Thank you, Tony, so much. We'll pull in Christopher Bell now. It's a revolving door. Christopher, we haven't got to talk to you too much. How about a hand for one of the most dynamic young racers in the world right now, Christopher Bell? Christopher, uh, welcome to Ash Weekend. Are you having a good time? Man, it's uh, been a ton of fun here racing. This is my first time to this racetrack, but I've seen a lot of videos here. I, uh, I think I actually watched Smoke win his first outlaw race here. So uh, I love this place. It was a lot of fun last night. It had a lot of character to it. You guys saw that big old cushion that we had. So tonight is a totally different racing surface, and I think we're going to put on a great show. Let's talk about your drive last night. That car was hauling the mail. What went wrong? What caused that right rear to blow up on you? Yeah, I think my right rear just got a little bit a little bit too deflated there under the red flag. And uh, whenever I took back off, it was low on tire pressure and just got really hot and uh, eventually blew out. How are you feeling tonight? Uh, I feel really good so far. Like I said, the track is almost 180 opposite of what we had yesterday, but uh, it's going to put on a really good show. You've already seen the B features there. The heat races at the top and bottom are really equal. So as a race car driver, that's all you want is, is to have options, be able to go to different lines. And here at Weekend, we've been having that. Well, the track is a uh, polar opposite tonight, but you've done the exact same line both nights in a row. Talk about your line way up there around Glenn's uh, front yard. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. They got a really nice bank up there, so uh, you can carry a lot of momentum. But the bottom is really good. You can get a, a really good launch off of, of corner exits. So I'm not really sure where the place is going to be today, tonight in the race, but hopefully we can figure it out and put it up there for 30 laps. Good luck, Christopher. How about it, ladies and gentlemen? Christopher Bell here at Osh Weekend, one of the most dynamic young talents in the world of racing. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Rico, and all the other amazing teams. Osh Weekend, make some noise for all our amazing race teams here who came in tonight and last night and put on some crazy racing. That's all from Victory Lane, guys. Back to you as we are ready to go with the Thunderstocks. It is time to go Thunderstock Racing. Feature event going to be 20 laps. Here is how they're going to line up. On the pole out of Simcoe, Ontario, in the number four, it's Aaron Rowitzki. Outside of row number one from Kester Center, the 28 is Jim Lampman. Starting third from Hagersville, the 49 is Dave Bailey. And on the outside of row number two from Port Colburn, the 21 is Jason Fontaine. Starting fifth from Hagersville, the 23 is Trevor DeBoer. Starting sixth out of Welland, the 05 is Pete Reed. Starting seventh from Victoria, the 84 RK is Ryan Beagle. Starting eighth, from Merlin, Ontario, the 96 is Steve Shaw Sr. Starting 9th out of Keister Center, the 28D is Donnie Lampman, and starting 10th from St. Catharines, the M1 is Rob Murray. Starting 11th from Guelph, Ontario, the 79 is Chris Hale. Starting 12th from Jerseyville, the 53 is Logan Schwedick. Starting 13th from Hamilton, the 43C is Clinton Nichols. Starting 14th in the 32, it's Mark Fawcett. Starting 15th from Harley, Ontario, the 37 is Rob Hoskins. Starting 16th from Oshweek in the 24, Blake Bombury Jr. Starting 7th out of Hamilton, the 25 is Kenny Sargent. Starting 18th from Hagersville, the 8 is Ryan Dinning. Starting 19th from Port Robinson, the 108 is Bill Bleach. Starting 20th from Thorold, the 11 is Go Fast Heeple. Starting 21st out of Oshweek in the 38 is Frank Turkey. Starting 22nd from Caledonia, the 21X is Mark Bazine. Starting 23rd from Brantford, the 1 is Chris Dickey. Starting 24th, it's Mike Ferguson in the 6R. Starting 25th from Brantford, the 40 is Derek Liverant. Starting 26th from Font Hill, the 7X is Kevin Kokrich. Starting 27th from York, the 14 is Johnny Lowenberg. 28th is the 41 of Adam Plazic. 29th, the 93 of Melissa Miller. 30th, the 43 of Kyle Andrus, and rounding out the field from Brantford, the 13 is Casey Huffman, and we've got Melissa Miller parked sideways in turn number one. I believe that is going to bring out an early yellow flag. No, it is not. She gets that car going, and we will stay under green. Aaron Rowitzki leading the way, and they are going to come up on Melissa Miller in that 93 in a big old hurry. It's time to commit. Aaron Rowitzki going to the high side. Dave Bailey to the low side. Look at Ryan Beagle. As well as that 21 machine. Who I believe is Jason Fontaine. Showing up as Reezy George in our scoring monitor. But I believe that's racing Jason Fontaine in the 21. And who to thunk it. Dry, slick racetrack, and here comes Ryan Beagle in the 84. He loves these track conditions as Kyle Andrus spins around in turn number two and comes to a stop. Aaron Rowitzki has to really check up to avoid Andrus to the inside. Everybody else 
able to find a line around as we've got one smoker on the racetrack. It's Chris Dickey in the number one. Clinton Jeffrey, what do you got? Well, if we can ask Darren to take my mic down a little bit, we can talk and I'll help you call this race. Jason Fontaine in the 21X called up for the Burger Barn team. He's friends with Gord Morrow, one of the uh, team captains over there. Gord knew Jay as a veteran here. Mark been struggling a bit with the handling on the car, so they've got Jay out to sort it out tonight. And uh, looking pretty good behind that 21X. He's definitely a talented wheel man with lots of experience. Of course, normally drives the 1J. Always a beautifully prepared race car, but so is this 21 machine with Burger Barn on the side of it. Well, from Jay being, uh, you know, a privateer running on his own dollar to get behind the wheel of a Burger Barn machine built by Jimmy Lowenberg is pretty wild, I'm sure, for Jay, seeing a whole new space age cockpit that he wouldn't normally see in his own car. Hey, Clint, I've got a couple of things I want to talk to you about now that we've got you. First off, how come you didn't come to me to talk about this grudge match that's been suggested for you and me and Greg Calden in go-karts on a Thursday night? Not worth my time. I whipped your butt on the dirt a few years back. A few years back. That was 20 years ago. I'm trying to hold on to my and youth. I, credit where credit is due. I did say Clinton Jeffrey has a 1-0 record in head-to-head -head races with me. But I, I don't think it's going to happen again. I, I, I want to have this, this match. Okay, no offense, but do you know how much size matters in go-karts? All the more reason when I destroy you, it's going to feel so much better, Clint. Any Thursday night, buddy. We're here, and All the right. carts are ready. All right, you heard it. Live on Mav TV Canada, Clinton has <laughs> accepted the challenge. Greg Cowlin has already decided he wants to do it just to run third and watch the carnage and slip through for all the glory. I wreck you so fast. Funny, I said a similar story earlier tonight. Let's go race him. We're about to go back to green. Dave Bailey in the 49 on the inside. Ryan Beagle in the 84 on the outside. Two of the best in the business here at Osh Weekend take off down into turn number one. Dave Bailey, the 49, has been so good, but you talked about it. Beagle is the master of going faster when it gets slick like this, and we got a log jam in turn one and two. Yeah, Ryan didn't got turned around in that number eight. Not sure, okay, and the yellow flag does fly as he starts to get going, which is great because I didn't get a chance to make my second point. <laughs> Go for it. Christopher Bell is a huge ambassador for iRacing. Yes. Online sim racing. It is on the race car that he's driving this weekend. He works closely with the people from iRacing. Uh, when they developed the dirt racing portion of the of the software, I, I said to him earlier on, I said, have you ever heard of someone going from iRacing directly into sprint car racing? And it kind of piqued his interest. So I introduced him to Alan Downey. Who what a thrill for Alan that must have been, right? Exactly. Well, we brought Alan over, got his picture with Christopher Bell. They talked a little bit. And then I talked to Christopher about our Rivals Racing League, how our vision is a 12-month-a-year racing schedule where we'd have our racing at Ashwikin Speedway. And then after our season ends, we race online and we broadcast those online the way we would a regular Friday night at Ashwikin. And, and his eyes just lit up saying, that is so cool. What a great concept. So I said, look, Chris, we're going to need some help. We, we got to get you to nudge the people <laughs> in charge. Get up here and scan Ashwikin Speedway and get it into the iRacing simulation. Yeah, and all you fans out there, if you're on iRacing, don't hesitate to send them an email and tell them, I want to see Ashwikin as a track pack that I can purchase for iRacing so we can race year round. So a little bit off topic, but but absolutely, you can, you can do it from home, folks. If you, if you have a passion for racing, it's something you should check out. You won't be disappointed. Let's go back to racing once again. Three laps are on the board, 17 laps remain. This is our Middleport Mechanical Thunderstock Division. They put on an amazing show every week. Here we go, Bailey again with the jump, but don't count out. Racing Jason Fontaine on the inside on that 21X. Rolling on the bottom, but he's got Bailey and Beagle right around him. Watching drivers just fight for the inside of the racetrack. Everybody wants to be down against the concrete. Brian Beagle about a lane and a half off the bottom, and then there's Aaron Rewitzki, who's just fallen out of the top five, but he seems content to run up in that outside lane in that beautiful black number four. 
As we watch Jason Fontaine try and hunt down Dave Bailey. Of course, Bailey is the multi-time track champion at all three of the dirt tracks here in Southern Ontario. So he has battled Fontaine many nights at Humberstone as they battle for those championships. Wow. Fun, oh, trouble on the front straightaway. One of them got straightened out. Was that Lampman into Lampman over there? No. No, Steve Shaw did a full 360 coming off of turn four and it looked all by himself, lost it. And I don't know if he flattened a tire or what happened. Donnie Lampman was up to speed, had nowhere to go. And he got pinched between the wall and, uh, and Steve Shaw Sr. And he slapped the wall pretty hard. Looked like he was going to try to drive that car back to the pits, but I think he is realizing now that uh, his night may have come to an early end, Clint. Well, Adam, we're on our way over to the scene. We'll get you some pictures in just a moment. Had a chat with, with both of them. They were in the pits walking their dog around. Donnie Lampman, 15 years old, and his father, Jim Lampman. No, this, this is Donnie Lampman, uh, who was pinned up in turn number one. The son of Jim Lampman. Jim Lampman drives a Camaro. He is out on the racetrack, running about the eighth or ninth spot right now. And uh, Jim kind of looked over and says, I'm tired of getting beat by my kid. But you could tell it was a real proud dad moment for Jim Lampman. I don't think he was tired of getting beat by his kid. He had a big grin on his face. Pretty proud of Donnie Lampman. But tonight is not going the way Donnie would have liked. And Clinton, you just had a chance to look at the damage on the right side. Now reaching into the car to uh, have some words with Donnie. And I don't think it's really going to be words of encouragement. I think it might be more the, uh, sorry, Donnie, your night's probably done. Yeah, his night's done here, Adam. He's got a left rear flat, left front flat, right front flat, and a busted tie rod. So he is uh, done for the evening. A pretty impressive young man, though. If you get a chance to meet him, a firm handshake, a look into the in the eye. Lots of uh, lots of positive energy out of Donnie Lambman. He also is an eye racer, so we're looking to get him into our rivals racing leagues as well this off season. Yeah, three feature wins this year at the halfway point for Donnie. One here, two at Humberstone. Quite the showing for the youngster. And all of that after never winning even a heat race prior to this season, as far as I know. He won a heat earlier this year, then won a feature, and then peeled off a couple of more wins. Winning breeds winning, that's for sure. Donnie only 15 years old here. And Clint, we're gonna take this opportunity for a commercial break. We'll be back on the other side with more All North Racing powered by Pint. All North Racing is brought to you by Lucas Oil, made in America, sold to the world. Go to InsideTrackNews.com for an exclusive subscription offer for MAV TV Canada viewers. Use promo code MAV TV. Welcome back to Ush Weekend Speedway on MAV TV Canada. We're about to go back to Green Flag Racing. First of four feature events on the night. Five laps are complete, 15 laps to go. Dave Bailey leads the way in the 49. Then it's Jason Fontaine in the 21. Keep your eye on that red and black number 84 of Ryan Beagle. He did fall back to the third spot, but that puts him on the inside for the restart. And I think Clinton Jeffrey, that's exactly where he wants to be. Certainly smooth and slow along the inside. The way to go. We'll see what Fontaine can do. One lane up off the bottom. Aaron Rewiski way up the, the hill here in turn three and four, trying to work that outside. As he does that, Trevor DeVore slips underneath. Real impressive move by Trevor DeBoer. I looked up a few laps ago and DeBoer, I don't think was even in the top 10 at that point. So he's made a couple of bold moves, finds himself almost in the top five as Clinton Nichols goes around in one and two. He's gonna keep that car rolling. We'll both have to go to a yellow flag. Well, you've got the multi-time champ, the former Humberstone champ, Ryan Beagle and the Maryville champ all right there under a blanket going at it and Bailey still streaking off to turn three but Fontaine is keeping him honest. Aaron Rewitzki is losing spots but I love the drive he's having up on the outside. He's, he's the only driver inside the top eight or nine cars who's really up on the outside and doing anything other than running around the bottom. It's 14 laps to go. Somebody's got to try something different at the front to get a run on Dave Bailey. Adam, you told me many years ago here, if you want to win, you've got to go where the other drivers aren't. That's what Witzke's doing. Do you think he was listening to Glenn or getting texts from the boss? Well, you know, Aaron Rewitzki has not had a great season with some mechanical problems and mishaps that, that weren't really of his doing. So some of it might just be that he's content to run a line where nobody else is running, where he doesn't have to worry about getting run into. The other thing is, if he was on the bottom, he wouldn't be making much progress anyhow. 
10 laps in, 10 to go here with the Thunderstock feature. Dave Bailey out front and leading over Jason Fontaine, Ryan Beagle, Rob Murray in the battle for fifth is Logan Schwedek and Trevor DeBoer. If you remember one of our TV races earlier on this season, Dave Bailey got beat by Trevor DeBoer right at the end of the race and he kind of mustered a smile and said, well, if I'm gonna get beat, you know, I like racing with Trevor DeBoer, he's a buddy of mine. I think tonight he's, he's out here for one thing only and that's to win this race. I don't think he'll be as gracious a second place finisher tonight if something is to go wrong. Top three make it past Clinton Nichols as they take it back to turn number one. 11 on the counter, nine to go unofficially here in the Thunderstock feature. And it is Dave Bailey streaking away at him, but they still gotta be happy. They've had nothing but trouble with this 21X all year. So to have it running this well has gotta have the Burger Barn team smiling. Well, and they knew Jason Bontaine, as you said, an experienced race car driver. He'll be able to give them quality feedback, let them know what he's feeling. He's given this car a great run. Ryan Beagle showing a nose to the inside, not really forcing the issue right now, but he, he has asserted himself that there is a line even lower than what Jason Fontaine is running in that 21 machine. Back onto the front, shoot into one goes Dave Bailey. Six to go for the 49. 21X of Jason Fontaine, 84 of Ryan Beagle. He has dropped a little bit back now, Adam, and given up some ground to that Burger Barn machine. Yeah, he certainly has, but look at this. There's slow traffic running side by side. Dave Bailey having to go way down to the inside. There's not much room to squeeze in between himself and that slower car on the bottom, but he managed to make it work. Yeah, Mike Ferguson filling in for Jeff Roloffs, who actually won that car in a draw from Mike Ferguson. Jeff and his wife just had a baby yesterday, and uh, they tapped Michael to drive here tonight. So congrats, Jeff and family. I was also wondering what had happened this year to Mike Ferguson, so a neat opportunity for him to come out and drive a car that he's very familiar with. Yeah, Mike just said family and work commitments got to be too much. He absolutely loves it and misses it, but uh, having fun here tonight. But the guy having fun is our leader in the Queenston Chevrolet 49. Dave Bailey pulling away with that Jibs Action Sports machine. Been so dominant for the last five to seven years anyways, Adam. He's got a little bit of breathing room over Jason Fontaine, but one little bobble and Fontaine will be all over him. Plus they've got some slower traffic just ahead and with two laps to go, they are going to have to make moves around this lap traffic. This could get exciting. Fontaine there about five car lengths in the rear, trying to make a plan. Take a stab here at Bailey. If there were team orders, it might have worked there, but Bazine can't close the door on Bailey for his teammate, Jason Fontaine, and Fontaine now slips by the other Burger Barn 21. It's like seeing double down into turn one with one lap to go, Dave Bailey by about five. Carlings pulls out of turn number two, streaks down the back straight away. Double cheeseburger, here we come out of turn four. Dave Bailey with control of the field, comes down to it. Double checkers out, Dave Bailey wins it over Jason Fontaine with a great run. Beagle back there in the third spot. Then you've got the one of Murray and the 53 of Logan Schwedek will round out the field. Good clean race for the Thunderstocks. A couple of yellow flags early on, fairly innocent spins, but uh, once they got things rolling, they really clicked off some laps and Dave Bailey was flawless and the inside groove and that Brewster Baker look-alike for all you Kenny Rogers fans. And really, who's not a Kenny Rogers fan? I mean, before Kenny Rogers Roasters, back when he was still on top of the world. Clinton Jeffrey gonna head down to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane, have a word with Dave Bailey, Jason Fontaine and Ryan at Beagle as Lone Wolf fireworks light up the sky over Victory Lane here at the Speedway. Sean Gibbs down there orchestrating things in Victory Lane. Well, guys, Dave Bailey gets the helmet off. He'll work his way out here to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane on All North Racing, powered by Pindies. 
Another television win coast to coast for Dave Bailey as he works his way out. We'll get everybody to make some noise as he comes on out of the car. How about it? A big Oshweekin Speedway, Mr. Transmission Victory Lane for Brewster Baker, Dave Bailey. Dave, what a run tonight. Uh, the track really slicked up for you guys tonight. Let's talk about your run. Uh, you obviously got to be pleased. Yeah, normally we're terrible when it gets like this. and. Uh, We've just been working so we don't look silly on these big shows, and uh, looks like we finally got it done. Really slick track. I don't think we've seen it this slippery all year. No, it's, uh, it's nuts. It's, like, super hard. I'm sure that there's a lot of asphalt people here tonight uh, watching, and it's like trying to hit a line on asphalt track. You miss that thing by, like, six inches, eight inches, you're screwed. So, um, yeah, just got to be real patient and keep it on the bottom. Safe to say your pavement experience helped out tonight. Yeah, it has to. It was awesome. What do you want to thank, Dave? Um, first, I thank uh, Pitties for putting this on and uh, Mr. Transmission, uh, Jibs Action Sports, um, Transport Sales and Service, Transaxle, uh, Queenston Chev. There you have it, guys. He grabs another one. Dave Bailey gets it done here on All North Racing, powered by Pinties. Another big win for Dave Bailey, no stranger to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane, multi-time champion here at the Speedway, and now Clinton Jeffrey standing by with second place. Well, Fonz, pretty good run for you. Uh, they called you up to help get the bugs worked out of that car. Are you jacked up after that run? Oh, definitely. Uh, I can't thank uh, Gord and Jay enough from the Burger Barn for uh, giving me this opportunity. This is definitely one hell of a car. Uh, I helped them with the setup over the, over the last couple of weeks, and it's definitely coming around. Good job, Jay. Who do you want to thank? Definitely want to thank them, and I can't leave out everybody else that gets me here every week. Club 54 and Dan Williams and Thruway Muffler and uh, my family, my girlfriend, my kids. Good to have you here, Fonz. Thank you. Jason Fontaine, with a good run, but so did you, Beagle. Ryan Beagle, every time it gets slick like that, I mean, I, I'd be picking on my rival's picks for sure, man. Good run tonight. Uh, you got to be pleased to be here. Oh, yeah. Anytime you can stand here and talk to you guys like this is, uh, is a good night. But uh, I don't know what we're going to do to beat the 49, but he's, uh, he's good. But we'll try again next week. Solid run. There's Ryan Beagle in third. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a hand for your top three? Dave Bailey, Jason Fontaine, and Ryan Beagle. Get it done here on All North Racing, powered by Pinties from Oshweekin Speedway. Action Sprinter feature event will be coming up next here on All North Racing, powered by Pinties. All North Racing is brought to you by Pinties Delicious Foods, making great food fun. Production support provided by Enrium Dynamics. Broadband services provided by Indicative Solutions. Here's how they're going to line up for the Crate Sprint Car. The Strickland GMC Crate Sprint Car feature event on the pole in the number 20 out of Six Nations is the Iceman Johnny Miller. Outside of row number one from St. Thomas, the 52 is Jesse Costa. Starting third from Hagersville, the 49H is Jerry Hill, and starting fourth from Oshweek, and the 28 is Jordan Hill. Starting fifth from Rockwood, the number 74 is Rob Neely. Starting sixth from Tonawanda, New York, the 7NY is Matt Farnham. Starting seventh from Vanessa, the Hurricane, Hannah Farrell behind the wheel of the number four, and starting eighth from Binbrook, the 29 is Liam Martin. Starting ninth out of Beamsville, the 88H is Josh Hansen. And starting 10th from Beachville, the 5 is DJ Christie. Starting 11th from Burford, the 12 is Brad Heron. Starting 12th from Beamsville, the 1A is Paul Klager. Starting 13th, the gunslinger from Caledonia, the R52, is Ryan Hunsinger. Starting 14th from Brantford, the 49L is Lucas Smith. Starting 15th from Waterloo, the 19D is Alan Downey. And starting 16th from Port Colburn, the 5D is Jacob Dykstra. Starting 17th from Waterdown, the 5C is Connor Mahoney. Starting 18th from Welland, the 3B is Blaine Barrow. Starting 19th from Oshweek in the 9C is Brian Nanakoke. And starting on the outside of row number 10 from Salmon Arm, British Columbia, the 26 is John Verney. Starting 21st from Ancaster, the 26X is Terry Baker. Starting 22nd from Gore's Landing, the 19 is Brandon Merle. Starting 23rd from Niagara Falls, the 70 is Bailey Hurd. Starting 24th from Odenock, Quebec, the 55J is Brian Cloutier. Starting 25th from Mount Bridges, Ontario, the 45 is Nick Sheridan. And starting 26th from Kitchener, the 50LS, it's Adrian Staley.
if you heard earlier on, have a look. That 19 car just in the screen right now, if you're watching on television on Mav TV Canada, that is Alan Downey. That's the driver we were talking about. It came straight from iRacing right into a sprint car behind the wheel. And really didn't have much of a, a learning curve either. Race fans from turn number four, get up on your feet, grab your hat, grab a program, grab whatever's nearby, give these drivers a wave. They're going to be waving back. They're about to do battle for 20 laps. That is their A main, the largest turnout of action sprint tour cars in the history of the series. 43 cars, Greg, tonight attempted to qualify, or was it 46? When I, when I give a big lead in like that, I really should have my facts straight, shouldn't I? Adam, what the heck are you thinking? I like how you threw it to me and made it my problem. 46, guys, 46. <laughs> Thank you, Clinton. Knew we could count on you. Green out of four, race fans. Johnny Miller and Jesse Costa bring them off a turn number four. Double green flags in the air from Kyle McKenzie. We are underway. Johnny Miller, the Iceman, leads the pack. Here comes Jesse Costa, though, working the outside line. He is going to go side-by-side -side with Jerry Hill down into corner three. Impressive start by Hannah Farrell, the Hurricane, in that white and red Oakwood Transport Lucas Oil-sponsored machine. Matt Farnham just got around her for the four spots, but she got really a nice run through one and two that first time around. Down the hill comes Jesse Costa as he's cleared third and fourth and now is trying to work the outside line on Johnny Miller. You wonder if Jesse Costa watched some of those B mains and saw how good the top side is. You've got to think that he did. And I mean, this is such a different racing surface than these drivers are used to. Trouble up in one and two. DJ Christie goes around. Rob Neely squares him up, spins him around the other direction. Alan Downey has to take some evasive action. So let's have a look at this radio shuttle number 74 of Rob Neely as he comes down the front stretch. There you see DJ Christie parked sideways in one and two. Neely's car looks to be all right. I'm not sure if it still has a front bumper on it, but uh, it did its job. All North Racing is brought to you by Case IH, a global leader in agriculture and farm equipment. Race Time Radio, we get you closer. Sunday night, 6.45 p.m. Eastern on racetimeradio.com and Sirius XM at 9 p.m. Eastern on Channel 167. Well, we're standing by in the pits with young Josh Hansen, 17-year-old Josh Hansen to be exact. Josh, you're doing double duty in these sprint cars. We just took a good look at your wrecked car from last night. you got to strap in tonight because you're leading the Crate Sprint Tour points with the Action Sprint Tour. How can you uh, get back in the game? Uh, I'm just trying to stay calm and cool. And, you know, there's 45 Crate cars tonight, which is huge. And I just want to try and make the main tonight and then try and work my way up through the night, like through the main. Uh, I just... I try to stay cool, I'm moving a little slow today, but all in all, hopefully tonight goes better. Now with all those cars, it's always tough. You need everything to go right. What do you got to do to make sure you get a spot in that A-Main tonight? Uh, well, it starts with a good pill draw. I got not the greatest pill draw. Hopefully probably start mid-pack, hopefully make my way in that top four and make the main. Good luck tonight, Josh. There you have it, young 17-year-old Josh Hansen doing double duty in the sprint cars. Last night, a major crash. Gonna try and pick one up tonight. White flags out, so we are ready to get back at it. Next time around with Jesse Costa leading the way over Johnny Miller in the second spot. Being told Johnny has quite the following down in Arizona and uh, has his own chapter of the uh, fan club down there in the uh, great state of Arizona. Uh, they really like the Iceman in Arizona. Go figure. <laughs> Matt Farnham right there in third. Jerry Hill having a very solid night from start to finish. He's up there in fourth. And it's Hannah Farrell. They're in the fifth spot. Green flag back in the air. Liam Martin got up over the right rear. A little bit of Brad Hare, and that's a battle deep in the uh, in the top ten. I think it's a battle for the sixth spot. Out in front, Jesse Costa to the outside in that 52. Here goes Matt Farnham to the inside in the seven machine. Oh, Lucas Smith is broken on the left front, and that car will come to a stop at the high side of three. He got pinched into the wall, and that was just a bad lap for Lucas Smith because he had some contact down here on the front stretch as well. Now the driver of the Massage Pro number 49L will come to a stop on the high side of three. See so he's got the steering wheel off and that left front crumpled over and by the looks of it the right side's not much better. 
One of our drivers who's qualified for every A feature this season, only, well, there's only three of them now because Stephen Beckett didn't qualify for this race, did he? Well, that's regular Friday night standings. This is an action sprint tour event, so. Come on. Well. Are you going to do that? Yes. Are these crate sprint cars? Yes. The same crate sprint cars we run on a Friday night with mostly the same drivers? But this is an action sprint tour event. Are you really that thick? Yes, I am. Wow. Not as thick as you, though. <laughs> well, you were talking literal. Yeah, yeah. Well, didn't we have this conversation earlier about <laughs> getting punched, punched metaphorically <laughs> between the legs? It's not the same as getting punched between the legs. Right, Clinton Jeffrey, who's down on the scene with Lucas Smith climbing out of that 49L. Well, he jumped out quickly to take a look at it. Lucas, you jumped out quickly to take a look at that car, but it's uh, not fixable. No, not tonight. Uh, I don't know what else to say, man. <laughs> you got pinched in the wall. Get with your car. We'll fill them in on what happened. Adam, what I need you guys to do if you get a chance is figure out which car pinched him into the wall. He was getting that outside run like we've seen Rico and Christopher and some of these guys do right up around the outside. When he come off a two, he was sticking on the outside. The other car was still drifting up. He got pinched in the wall and rode all the way down the back stretch, concrete blocks. Yeah, I didn't see who he had been racing with, to tell you the truth. Well, it's one of those things, Adam. The guys he was racing with wasn't the one who got him because he came up on them so fast on that outside line. And I used to have talks with some of the guys who would run there. My brother, for example, I'd say, you know, you're going to get pinched off like that. And you can't be upset with the other driver because they have no idea, as you mentioned, no rearview mirrors, no idea that you're making that run. And they're running their own line, and all of a sudden you peer up beside them and jam it in between them and the wall. It can be tough sometimes. Well, I am hearing through my spotter in the grandstands, it may have been the 74 of Rob Neely. And like you say, it's, it's hard to be upset in that situation because they don't know that you're coming. But we watched Scott Cruder early this season yes. absolutely destroy a car in a similar situation. 74 Neely's not a bad guess, Adam. The nose wing is askew on that car. It is possibly the culprit. Back to the green flag as Jesse Costa leads Matt Farnham into corner one, but Farnham working the bottom side, trying to get a good launch off of two. No, Costa rockets off the top spot. Hannah Farrell again with a good launch through one and two. She'll move up to that third position, but what a battle at the front. Jesse Costa and Matt Farnham, a couple of very capable race car drivers duking it out at the front of the field. Look at how straight Jesse Costa goes into the corner. He doesn't pitch the car in like you often see. He drives it in front end first. That's a crazy line that he's running. Costa, your leader on lap number five with 15 laps left to go in this one for the action sprint tour as they work it down the back stretch. Jesse Costa, Matt Farnham breaking away from third place, Hannah Farrell. Drops to the bottom in one and two, and now in three and four, back to the outside again. Which line's he going to run this time? He goes back to the bottom. Really mixing things up as Jesse Costa in the 52, but it's working quite well for him. Costa up high, right around that rim. Farnham digging deep on the bottom side as they work off of corner number four and across the stripe. And he was right at the rim in three and four. I mean, almost to where you run out of banking and almost certainly get sucked into the abyss off the end of three and four. Bailey Hurd pulls off the racetrack, so his night comes to an end as Jesse Costa last time on one and two went to the bottom, back up to the top in three and four, so trying some different lines right now. Laps clicking away. I would say more of this field is working the bottom of the racetrack than working the top, but there's a few of them running nice lines around the high side, but at least Jesse Costa can change things up as he approaches lap traffic. He knows he can work the bottom, he knows he can work the top, and with the amount of heavy traffic ahead of him, he's going to have to have a couple of options. Coming to the cross flags momentarily. As Jesse Costa crosses the stripe, 10 laps go up onto the scoreboard. 10 laps down, 10 laps remain as Jesse Costa enjoys about a 10 car length lead over Matt Farnham as they work down into three and four. Costa right up the outside, Farnham around the bottom of the racetrack. Things about to get heavy in front of the race leader, Jesse Costa. Costa back up on the top side with Farnham right there. Top two have broken away a good distance away from Hannah Farrell with a solid third place run right now. Liam Martin 
They're in position four, and Brad Heron with a good top five outing for him. You saw a bit of a rooster tail on the turn number three off of Jesse Costa's number 52. That means he got up over the cushion, up into the loose clay. That could have been a bad scene for Costa. Now we'll drive the car in on the middle of the racetrack where there's no grip as he slides up the track. Matt Farnham drives to the inside. Give Matt Farnham the lead. Farnham in that seven machine has the top spot, but Costa digs back on the bottom. They're wheel to wheel and there's no racing room coming out of the corner. How will they all fit? Farnham threads the needle and puts two lap cars between he and Costa. The truth of the matter is they would not all fit. And that's a big advantage to Matt Farnham as Jesse Costa has lost a lot of ground. Still plenty of laps left, six laps to go, but he's got to regroup. He's got to get around these lap cars and try to mount a challenge on that 7NY. Farnham works off a of corner number four, leading the way over Jesse Costa. Five laps left to go, says flagman Kyle McKenzie with a big high five. Costa back there in second. And all the while, the Hurricane, Hannah Farrell's kind of closed the gap a little bit. She's not right there yet, but she's doing a nice job of that third place run. Wow, Costa drove it down the inside, trying to get around Sheridan in the 45. Sheridan closed the door, and I mean, Sheridan wouldn't have known he was there, but uh, tense moment for Jesse Costa in that second position. Lap car is so tough to get around in these feature races, and Jesse Costa is going to have, I'm sure, a few choice words for those lap cars tonight. Like you said, though, they don't know he's there, but either way, I'm still sure it's frustrating for Jesse Costa. And even a lap car is battling. It, no matter what you're doing on the racetrack, you're battling for a position with somebody else. So they've got to drive hard. They've got to run their line. But right now, Matt Farnham holding a pretty wheel with two laps to go. Driving that Hoddock Racing, number 7NY leads the way. One up high, Allen Downey in corner number two, gets the car back on track right in front of second place, Jesse Costa. Meanwhile, Liam Martin has been able to scoot by Hannah Farrell into the third spot, put Farrell back to fourth, and Brad Heron still there in fifth. White flag, Hannah Farrell's got one more lap to try to get Liam Martin back and wind up on the podium. That would be a huge score for Farrell as she eases around the outside of Blaine Barrow to the inside of Liam Martin for third. Off a of corner four, checkers in the air for Matt Farnham. He'll pick up the victory. Second will go to Jesse Costa, who will take home third. It looks like it's going to be Liam Martin. Martin with a great drive, taking third. Hannah Farrell, nothing to be ashamed of, finishing fourth, rounding out the top five. It's Brad Heron. What a show for the uh, action sprint tour. Matt Farnham with the win, and what a battle between Farnham and Jesse Costa. A couple of drivers working all over the racetrack, and it was whoever got through that lap traffic had to be aggressive, they had to be clean, and they certainly were. Headed down to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane to meet Clinton Jeffrey, Joel, Richard, Joel Richardson from uh, Mr. Transmission gonna be down there to present some hardware to these drivers, Greg. Normal fireworks lighting up the sky here at the Big O tonight. The official firework provider of Oshuiken Speedway is uh, three drivers about to celebrate podium finishes here tonight. And the happiest man of all right there, Matt Farnham, picks up the win as Sean Gibbs gives him the Mr. Transmission hat. We get set to send it down to Clinton Jeffrey down there in Mr. Transmission victory lane. Thanks a lot, Greg. Matt Farnham gets... His belt's off, picks the helmet off, and gets ready to go. He'll lift the Hans device out of the way. Here he comes, Oshuiken Speedway. How about a big victory lane, Mr. Transmission, Oshuiken Speedway celebration. Here he comes up on the top, ladies and gentlemen. How about it for New York State's Matt Farnham? Matt, come on around. We'll get a quick word with you. Matt, solid run here tonight. Uh, looked like lap traffic really helped you get to the front. Yeah, Jesse was fast tonight, and uh, he started on the front row. I started six. Uh, everybody here was really good. Track was awesome, and uh, lap traffic, I just uh, think I handled it a little bit better and used it to my advantage. And uh, can't thank everybody enough that uh, helps out with this car. Trey Hoddick, uh, Carl, Scott, Buck, my dad, Nick, everybody who came tonight. Uh, Composite Fiberworks, Merzak Trucking, uh, just everybody here at Oshwegan putting on a great show. Well, you got them all, Matt. Congrats. Thanks. There's your winner, Matt Farnham, ladies and gentlemen, guys. Solid run for him again. We'll get over and talk to second and third.
the good run for Matt Farnham, and he's got a pretty good batting average in these crate sprint cars. Been impressive in that 7NY. Now Clinton Jeffrey down there with second place. Well, Jesse, this one's got to be a bit painful. You were well out in front, then the lap cars just couldn't get through them quick enough. Uh, did that cost you this one? Uh, yeah, I think so a little bit. I seen uh, Matt on the bottom of one and two, so I moved down there, and I thought we were good, and then we got bottled up in the lappers, and sometimes you win one, sometimes you lose one. We lost one this time, but... Uh, I right, thank DNO Towing, Magnum Signs, Castro Canada, Best Safety Training, Leach Performance for the Awesome Engine, Wilder's Mill Rights, and uh, Wells Foundry and Ron Gentello, Ron Gentello Property and uh, Building Maintenance. My dad, my crew, uh, Stephen works his ass off on this thing. And uh, Shweekin for the awesome facility and the fans for coming out. We have Jesse Costa, solid run. Liam Martin, another one of our young guns. Liam, uh, you had solid runs out of the Action Sprint Tour this year. Can you be pleased with tonight's third place run? Um, I'm very pleased with tonight's run. It was uh, it was an awesome race for uh, the top three and every driver. Um, but it was a tough race to race tonight. The the, the track was slick and um, Matt and Jesse were too far ahead of me for me to figure out one and two to go down low and catch them. But uh, I'd like to thank all my sponsors, my dad, crew, everyone. Good job, Liam Martin. How about it for our top three tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Matt Farnham gets it done. Jesse Costa and Liam Martin also in the top three for round seven of the Action Sprint Tour. All North Racing is brought to you by Pinty's Delicious Foods, making great food fun. Mr. Transmission, Canada's transmission and technology experts. Take Mr. No, friend of mine. Back live on All North Racing, powered by Pinty's, as we get ready for the final two features of the Northern Summer Nationals, night number two. Been a fantastic couple of nights. And up next, we'll have the Race of Champions Sportsman feature coming out onto the Speedway. And they will run in a 30-lap feature event. And uh, one of the biggest names in all the sportsman world is Brad Rouse. And our own Clinton Jeffrey had a chance to catch up with Brad earlier today. Well, we're here in the Sportsman Pit area with Brad Rouse. Brad, you've got over five wins here at Osh Weekend. A lot of experience here. What do you expect tonight? Uh, it should be really good racing. Whenever we come here, uh, these guys are good. They put on a good show and uh, just hopefully just some good clean racing and some fast times. The track has been a little bit difficult last night with the weather. What do you expect tonight? Uh, hopefully slick, fast. Uh, I heard a lot of rain yesterday and made it a little bit fast, but um, with these cars, a little bit rough isn't good. Same as the sprints, but it should be good. It always is good here. Watch for Brad Rouse tonight in the Race Champion Sportsman feature coming up. Ready to go, the ROC Sportsman feature event as things break up down to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane for the Action Sprint Tour. And uh, they'll be back in action this weekend. And uh, still just a handful of races left on the 2019 schedule. But it's time to turn our attention to where it all started, Adam, the sportsman here at Oshuiken Speedway, and it's always exciting to bring Modifieds back to the Big O. This was the premier division when the track opened in 1996. Uh, remained the premier division until, I want to say, the end of 2006. Greg, I think 2007 was the start of uh, Sprint Cars as the headline division, if I'm not mistaken. Saw a lot of great race car drivers come through here in the dirt sportsman ranks, people that are... Uh, Top of the sport now, guys like Matt Shepard, Stuart Fries, and Chad Brockman, they all came through here in the Sportsman Tour, and they all loved coming here to race. So for the fans that have been here since the beginning, when the grandstands were a little bit smaller, the lights were a little bit dimmer, but the, the passion was here and the great racing was here, this is a trip down memory lane for sure. Starting lineup for tonight's 30-lap main event for the Race of Champions Sportsman Tour. Going from the pole in car number 11 from Bloomfield, Ontario, that'll be Dan Ferguson alongside him. Justin Sharp in the 8S, he'll go from second. Starting in the third position, Greg Penante in the Triple J Motorsports number 99P. And going off fourth, we just heard from him on MAV-TV Canada in the interview with Clinton Jeffrey. That's Brad Rouse. He's out of Fort Erie in the 18R. Starting in fifth, Dylan Davidson out of St. Catharines in the 73 machine. He'll go from fifth. Going from the sixth spot is Dave DePietro. And he drives car number 68. Rolling off seventh out of Port Colburn. That'll be Adam Leslie in car number 15. Alongside him, heavy Chevy, Chad Chevalier from Port Colburn in car number 12. Starting in the ninth position, Tyler Pachelski out of Port Colburn in the 21P. And Daryl Farrellway will start in 10th in car 66. Starting in the 11th spot, that is James Michael Friesen out of Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario in car 72. 
And alongside him, Robbie Johnston out of Ransomville, New York in the 33J. Going 13th, Trevor Wright out of Beamsville in the 09. And Jordan Costco flanks his outside in out of St. Catharines in car number 17C. Starting 15th, Emily Pachelski out of Port Colburn, Ontario, the 12P. And Hall of Famer right here at the Speedway. Jay Mallory, the mongrel in car number 20, starts 16th. 17th starting spot goes to Joey Harriman's out of uh, here in Ontario in the 57 car. And going from the 18th spot, Sam Junkin out of Alden, New York in car number two. 19th position will go to Chris Waters in the 119 with Matt Sharp on his outside in the 5S. Starting 21st, that'll be Lee Mallory in car 44 and Rob Souter in the 93 from Port Colburn starts 22nd, 23rd. Mike Bayor out of Colburn in the 54A, and Chris Hawkins out of Stevensville, Ontario, in the 25 will start 24th. Four wide for you, the fans, as they come down here on the front stretch, the Race of Champions Sportsman Tour. Greg, if I'm not mistaken, Michael Bayor in the 54, the only driver not to make it out for the feature event. So 23 cars going to make up this uh Race of Champions feature lineup, an impressive starting field for sure. White flag comes out next time. Bye, will be to the green flag with the Race of Champions Sportsman Tour. 30 laps with Dan Ferguson on the front row. If you're a Brighton Speedway fan, you know the Ferguson name. Dan Ferguson, a multi-time winner in the Canadian Modified Division, and his dad, Rick Ferguson, Long time late model driver drove one number lower. Car number 10 is Rick Ferguson. But Dan, tonight, the Bloomfield Bullet will start from the pole and he will see the double greens from Kyle McKenzie and set the pace for us off of corner four. Ferguson on the inside, Justin Sharp on the outside. The green flags fly, we are underway. They rumble down into corner number one, and it gets busy quick. Here comes Greg Panante. He was fast in the heats, and he's out to the lead going into corner three. Dylan Davidson got a nice run off of turn number two. He's up in the third spot, but Brad Rouse to the inside of him. He's going to take that third position. Ah, not so fast at the stripe. Davidson wins that battle at the line. One lap complete. Four wide mid-pack, and the guy on the outside is Dan Ferguson, the pole sitter, and now problems on the left front for Trevor Wright, and he will pull the 0-9 now down to the infield. The left front bent over on that 0-9 machine. Tough ending for that driver as his night ends after completing just one lap of the scheduled 30-lap distance out in front. Greg Penante leading the way by eight car lengths over Justin Sharp in the yellow number eight. Sharp up on the high side of the racetrack, Brad Rouse running in third on the bottom. You want to talk about a guy that's good on a dry, slick track? That guy in third place, Brad Rouse. We've heard from him already, and this is what makes him so good because when you get into New York State, you get into some dry, slick tracks, and Brad Rouse, here he is making his run on the second spot on Justin Sharp. Dylan Davidson right behind them. Greg Penante, he's got a lot of wins at this racetrack. So does Brad Rouse in the 18 machine, and they're showing that right now. They just know their way around this facility. Penante stretching that advantage a little bit over Justin Sharp in the 8S, but how much of that is being set up for the end of the race? Brad Rouse runs a lot of extra distance races, Greg, so I would expect him to have a good setup towards the end of this race, and maybe that's what he was thinking when they uh, put the setup under the race car for this feature. Yeah, very good point, Adam. He knows about the uh, extra distances and how to set these cars up for those uh, such races as here he goes to the inside of Justin Sharp. Sharp officially now back to the third spot. Dylan Davidson there in fourth, and Chad Chevalier riding inside the top five. Adam Leslie just on the outside. In the 15 car, he's running in the sixth spot, and right behind him, Daryl Faraway and Dave DiPietro are going at it. I like what Chevalier did last time in three and four. He pitches the car in a little bit sideways, gets it to take a set, and he's really able to drive straight through turn four. So in effect, you're almost making the front straightaway a little bit longer to carry more speed down into turn one. Dan Ferguson, the pole sitter, has pulled off now on lap number eight, so troubles for the Bloomfield, Ontario driver as Greg Penante sets the pace, but Brad Rouse looks to be closing the gap. 
They already get two second advantage last time with the stripe. This time as they come by, yeah, Brad Rouse has picked up nearly half a second on Greg Penanti in the 99P. But anybody in this top five still within contention, Greg. Third, fourth, and fifth uh, running some different lines right now, although Chad Chevalier and uh, the Justin Sharp machine running just higher than Dylan Davidson, and those three have been kind of going back and forth. So curious to watch these drivers. It's just very, very minor differences in the lines they run, where they start to get on the throttle, where they, I don't want to say they're ever coasting, but there are times when you're just letting the suspension do the work through the turn, and then there's times when you're trying to get back to the throttle and really put the power down as Chad Chevalier goes to the inside of Justin Sharp. Top two remain about four or five car lengths apart. Greg Panante leading, beginning to catch the tail end of the field. Rouse in second, Davidson running third. He's put a little distance on himself between he and Chad Chevalier and Justin Sharp. Chevalier just got by Sharp. Sharp's going to shoot back by on the bottom. Great battle back there for the fourth position as Greg Panante closing in on some slower traffic right now, and he's been committed to the bottom every single lap in that 99, and he may have to get up off the bottom unless he wants to try to wedge himself to the inside and get a little assertive on this lap traffic. Brad Rouse up on that outside line. We'll see if the gap closes this time by, and it does cut it in half. Six tenths. Greg Penante with a nice move to get to the inside of that slower traffic. He'll clear both of them off a of turn two down into three. Now it's up to Rose to try to do the same thing as the cross flags mean. Halfway through this one, 15 laps down, 15 laps to go. Penante, Rouse right there, a couple car lengths apart. They've got uh, some distance on Dylan Davidson, but he has closed the gap here in about the last five, six laps and that number 73 machine. Davidson really charged turn number three and got the car slowed up enough to keep it on the bottom of the racetrack. That's an exciting line being run by that number 73 machine. The entire top five, unless I'm crazy, seems to be closing back in like an accordion, Greg. And right behind them, Adam Leslie and James Michael Friesen not far off of this fight inside the top five. They're right there within striking distance of Chad Chevalier. Brad Rouse, just two car lengths off the back bumper of Greg Penante going into one and two. Penante got off the corner a lot better, picked up about three car lengths down the back stretch, but Rouse able to close that distance, watch it slip away. This is what we watched earlier on in the feature event for the for the Thunderstock division, the way things spread out and close back in. Greg Penante. Brad Rouse, Dylan Davidson, the top three, now make it the top six. Well, now seven as Adam Leslie gets by a lap car. Top seven are all clear of lap traffic. And all on the same straightaway. Right now, Greg Penante, if he had a rear view mirror, it would be a great time to just grab it and throw it out the race car. You don't want to see what's going on behind you. He's led the entire distance so far. The bottom is working pretty well for him, and he stays out in front by that four car lengths or so over Brad Rouse as Kyle McKenzie both hands down in front of these drivers saying there's 10 laps left. This is where things will get interesting. If you've set your car up for the longer run here tonight, this 30-lap feature, it's time to show what you've got. Brad Rouse kind of searching around, it seems, though. Well, and Rouse has been doing that the entire race. He's not run the same line an awful lot. We're going to see if that pays off for him. Greg Penante has not varied from the line he's been running, but, of course, why would he? It's been working for him as Brad Rouse sails that car into three and four on the outside. Here he comes around the outside of corner four. Two lap cars directly in front of Greg Penante as the leaders go down into corner number one. Rouse is there and shows the uh, nose a little bit on the left rear of that 99P machine. That's the closest he's been all night. Here he comes on the outside line with lap traffic in between. Panante trying to get that nose to the inside. This is a big moment for Greg Panante. If he can clear this lap traffic without having to stray from his line, that'll be a huge deal for the driver of the number 99. 
The driver that likes the lap traffic the most, I think, is Dylan Davidson. He's caught the top two now. He's right there on the back bumper of the 18R. Brad Rouse working off a of corner number four. Panante leads at the line over Rouse, Davidson, Chevalier, and James Michael Friesen. And that's the driver by far with the least amount of experience is Dylan Davidson in the 73. You would think that would not bode well for him in slow traffic, but it seems to be working just fine as he works his way through as Chad Chevalier again pitch the car up into three drives and hard off at turn number four. Man, I love that move by Chevalier. We have got a great battle for the lead. Parante, Rouse, Chevalier, all right there, as well as Dylan Davidson. Dylan Davidson gets shuffled back into the fourth position. It's the leaders have worked by Joey Harriman, so the top two break free as Davidson and Chevalier continue to go back and forth. Chevalier up about two lanes off the bottom of the racetrack. Dylan Davidson right around the concrete wall on the inside, which makes slower traffic a big story. Chevalier going to drive into three like he's been doing. Drive it off the cushion to the inside. What a move by Chevalier. Down in corner one, Brad Rouse is right there. Right there on the back bumper of Greg Penante. As they get into the corners, the differential closes and Rouse trying to work it down the hill off a of corner four. He's right there. Well, Greg Penante having to go to the high groove well, just off the bottom to try to get around the slower traffic. Penante goes around, clips Chad Chevalier. Chevalier clips James Michael Friesen. Oh, my goodness. What an unfortunate turn of events for Greg Penante in the 99. I really want to see this replay. Greg Penante visibly upset inside that race car, hands out the window. Led the first 28 laps of this one. And we'll have a chance to see the replay. I almost wonder if the contact with Brad Rouse jammed the steering wheel out of his hand. Let's watch the front oh. tires. Yeah. Okay, the contact with the front upset the car and then the back end of Brad Rouse's 18 kind of slapped into the back end of the 99. I'd like to see this angle one more time. What are your thoughts on it, Greg? Right front of Rouse into the left front of Panante, and I think you're right. It just, uh, that sent him kicking around. It upset the car. We haven't heard anything from race officials just yet. Greg Panante takes his beautiful number 99 Gaston's auto sales car to the pit area. Two laps to go. These are the things you expect to happen, Adam, I guess. Well, you're racing hard for the win. I, I, I'm not going to say it was dirty. I'm not going to say it wasn't. But you got drivers racing hard for the win. It looked to me as though Greg Penante had come off the bottom of the racetrack to try to navigate that slower traffic. Brad Rouse stayed a little more committed to the bottom groove and drove it in hard. How many times have we seen that? With the same cast of characters, Greg, these drivers yeah. have been racing hard like this for 20 years at racetracks, Humberstone Speedway, Merrittville Speedway, and racing on the Sportsman Tour where they go to racetracks throughout New York as well. Not sure if we can have another look at that replay. The, uh, the corner two camera really caught the best view of it from the uh, rooftop. Dave Steyer's camera up top. Uh, Brad's car kind of blocks the action, so... This view, kind of hard to see. But the corner two replay, hopefully we'll get a chance to see. That's where we'll see the, the contact, the front wheels. Here we go. Back to green. Two laps remain to settle this one. Chad Chevalier, he took a hard lick as well, but he's still out there turning laps in that 12 machine. And James Michael Friesen, who has not really been a factor tonight, is up there challenging for the lead as we've got one stopped in turn number one. So I believe we're going to come back to the caution flag as uh, Sam Junkin has brought out the yellow as he looped it around in corner number one. So back under the caution with still two laps left to go. And on the replay of this one, just see him loop it around. I'm not sure I missed the very start of that if maybe he made contact with the corner one wall down on the inside and then bounced up and spun around but nonetheless 
single car spin. Looks like we will go one to go. Still 28 laps on the board of a scheduled 30 lap feature distance. I've got to say, none of our feature events here last night or tonight have really disappointed, Greg. They've had a lot of action, a lot of uh, a lot of challenges for position. Probably Dave Bailey might have been the most dominant performance so far, but even that, his lead was rarely more than a couple of car lengths. What you want is good action and some storylines. We've had a lot of that so far here over the two days, and I'm sure before the night ends, there's maybe going to be a discussion over in the sportsman pit area because I don't think Greg Penante's too happy over what happened there. and Rightfully so, he had the car to beat, it looked like, early on. Brad Rouse inching James Michael Friesen up the racetrack through three and four. Friesen kind of rolling around the front end of the 18. Both of them hard on the throttle off of turn four. I like the run Friesen got as Davidson bounces off the 12 of Chevalier. Here comes Brad Rouse digging down on the inside. James Michael Friesen on the outside as they go into corner number three, side by side. This time by, we will see the white flag. One more trip around for the race of champion sportsmen. Beautiful crossover for James Michael Friesen coming off of turn four. Rouse gonna try to return the favor in one and two. Down the back stretch they go for the final time. JMF will lead them into corner number three in a car up and over on its side. And that will bring us under the red flag. Red flag comes out to stop the action. So keep in mind, no checkered flag was thrown. That's a red flag. Dave DiPietro is the one over on his side, the 68. So the field will come to a stop up in corner two. If I were them, I wouldn't head to the pits unless Joe Scott and Nicky told them to. Okay, we're hearing the next flag after the white does end the race, so I believe we do have our top three, James Michael Friesen, Brad Rouse, and Dylan Davidson. So the safety crew will work on the Dave DiPietro machine, and I believe the top three will need to go across the scales before they come down to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane. So we'll come back with the interviews here on All North Racing, powered by Pinties. All North Racing is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Made in America, sold to the world. Go to InsideTrackNews.com for an exclusive subscription offer for MAV TV Canada viewers. Use promo code MAV TV. Back live on All North Racing, powered by Pinties, down to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane, Clinton Jeffrey. James Michael Friesen picks up the win here in the race of Champion Sportsman Tour. Jimmy, pretty good running. Yeah, car was good. Uh, redrawn 11, starting at the back there. We had some tough competition starting up front, so it took me a little bit to get there. And then it uh, looked like the leaders kind of got together, which got me a nice caution, got me two free spots, got me up there to race with Brad. And uh, it would have been cool to go one more lap, see what he could have thrown at me, but uh, the car was good, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be out here in front of all these people tonight. Good job, James. Uh, that car, you were using all kinds of lanes around. Talk about the contact there when they got together in one and two. You definitely took a lick. Were you worried? I was, I was, but I pulled up beside Chad and I, uh, I was kind of freaking out in my own head going, oh man, I, I bent something up and he just gave me the old, don't worry about it. And so it went from there and it worked out. Good job. James Michael Friesen picks up the win here tonight on All North Racing, powered by Pinties. We'll turn it up to you guys. We'll get second and third ready. We'll get right back to you. When you're battling with someone for the lead, do you take their word for it that your car's okay? I'll keep going on. Well, it worked out good for James Michael Friesen. As we send it down, the runner-up tonight, Brad Rouse with Clinton Jeffrey. Thanks a lot, guys. Brad Rouse just making his way around the car. Brad, you were in this one all night. Uh, first off, the elephant in the room. What happened with Ponante? Uh, I just got underneath him and uh, trying to squeeze down a little bit, and we come together, and he went around. So... Um, I, I don't know what happened. Like I said, it was underneath. He was on dealing with a lap car, tried to go to the outside and switch lanes as I was already underneath. But Still amazing run here for you. I think this is the best track we've had for the sportsman cars in the last five years. Amazing surface for you guys. Uh, did you have fun tonight? Oh, yeah, for sure. We always have fun when we come here. The track's always great, and uh, 
you know what I mean? The hospitality and everything here is great. So. Thanks, Chad. There you have it from Brad Rose. The other guy, Heavy Chevy, Chad Chevalier. Chad, you were making moves out there. It almost looked like a bit of a hockey match up there. Elbows up the whole race. Uh, tough sledding. Yeah, we uh, unfortunately we got caught up with that uh, in that ordeal there. Uh, end up catching him there in lap traffic. I was uh, hoping to do something, but um, it is the way it is, and uh, we'll move on. It was a good race. Thanks to uh, all the fans to be here, and uh, Ash Wiegand for having us again. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your top three tonight. James Michael Fries and Brad Rouse and Chad Chevalier. You get it done for the Race of Champions Sportsman Tour here at the Northern Summer Nationals. When we come back, it's time for the main event. The 360 Sprint Cars will head to the racing surface here on All North Racing, powered by Pinty's. All North Racing is brought to you by Pinty's Delicious Foods, making great food fun. Production support provided by Enrium Dynamics. Broadband services provided by Indicative Solutions. Back here in the pits before we get going with Rico Aber, last night's winner. Rico, uh, pretty safe to say you're enjoying your stay in Canada after last night's drive? I have. Uh, it's It's been pretty good. My car was really good last night. The track surface, uh, you know, with the weather in the area, it, it turned out okay. And, uh, you know, I kind of just led the thing to the front. So. Uh, I didn't make too many mistakes, and I just made sure I hit my marks there at the end, so I had a lot of fun. Track conditions are expected to be quite a bit different. Obviously, weather come in a half hour before we go with cars on the track and things get a little bit wild. What do you expect tonight out there? I think tonight's going to be a lot slicker. I went and looked at the track. The surface is definitely harder. Uh, you know, the sun's been out all day, and uh, that's more of the surface that uh, I've seen at Oshwig, and not that I've been here every weekend to race, but just off the videos I've watched is a slicker surface. I think it puts on a little bit better racing, uh, so I'm lo really looking forward to tonight. 100%. Good luck tonight, Rico. Thanks. Things breaking up down to Mr. Transmission Victory Lane, so time to get ready for the big show. The Cool Kids Ice and Water Core Pack merchandising sprint cars ready to go with their 30-lap main event. Tonight's starting lineup for tonight's main event looks like this going from the pole out of Norman, Oklahoma. The Victory Games Original Traders Energy Bear Paw Convenience 67. It'll be Christopher Bell. Starting second from Alden, New York, the Casey's Truck Salvage Fiberworks Composite Merzak Enterprises number 49, the straight shooter Scott Cruder. Starting in third from Harding, Pennsylvania, the Mecha Mechanical Service Company 79, Jordan Thomas alongside him. In the fourth starting spot out of Fenwick, Ontario, the Bradshaw Brothers Fuels, Gibbons Contracting, car number zero. That is the Red Rocket, Jim Hoopinen. Going off fifth out of Sunbury, Pennsylvania, the foundation, Foundation's 55, number 55 of Mark Smith. And going from sixth out of Fenwick in the digital detail, Clearshot Customs 27H, the Fenwick Flyer, Tom Hoopinen. Going from seventh out of Scotland, Ontario, the original Traders Energy, Sovereign Fusion, Burford Heating and Air Conditioning, car number 47X, D-Dubs, Dylan Westbrook, and on his outside from Rushville, Indiana, in the Toco Rush Truck Center's Curb Records, 14 Smoke, Tony Stewart. Going from ninth out of Clay, New York, in the Longley Jones Company's number 98, Joe Trenka, and alongside him in the 10th starting position from Keister Center in the Burger Barn Ace One Construction Mobile One, number 13, it'll be Corey Turner. Starting 11th out of Lyde, Ohio, the MW Construction 17M, that is Max Stambaugh, and going from 12th out of Wantage, New Jersey, in the Dave Franick Auto Sales, number 28F, it's Davey Franick. Starting 13th from St. Matthew de Belloy, Quebec, the Four Seasons Foundation, 28 of Jordan Poyer, and from 14th out of Brewerton, New York, the Pit Stop Convenience Stores, 87 of Race and Jason Barney. Starting 15th out of Brantford, Ontario, the CarQuest Auto Parts, Brown Auto Service, number 10 of downtown Mitch Brown. And on his outside from Mississauga, Ontario, the Car Star Brantford, Nitro 54 Variety, Rip Shot, 17X, the Highlight Man, Mac to Man. Going from 17th out of Caster Center in the Kingpin Farms, Aiken Motors Burger Barn 91, it's Ryan Turner. And starting in position number 18 out of St. Matthew de Belloy, Quebec, the Four Seasons Foundation, 28 FM, the Fireball, Steve Poyer. Starting in position number 19 out of Thedford, Ontario, in the Coldwell Banker by Jennifer Hatch, A to Z expediting 5D, Shane Ross, and alongside him at the 20th position from Bradford, Pennsylvania, the bundle of warmth, Zimbardi Electric, 35, the juice, Jared Zimbardi. 
Starting 21st out of Loma, New York, in the Tioga Construction 3, it's Denny Peebles. And on his outside, last night's winner out of St. Helena, California, the Abreu Vineyards, Curb Records, Lucas Oil, 24 of Rico Abreu. Going 23rd out of St. Pete, Quebec, in the Veloci car number 3G, it's Dale Goslin. And from 24th out of Oshwick in the Case IH Rochester Nighthawks, Air Express, 68 of Aaron Turkey. And in the back row, starting 25th out of Brantford in the Hills Tire and Gas, Brown Auto Service, Little Ben, 110, Jake Brown. And from the 26th and final starting position out of Caster Center in the Charlie B. Honey, Pius Spring and Alignment, Mudcat Entertainment Center, number 11, it'll be Jamie Turner. 26 cars, 30 laps. The final event of the Northern Summer Nationals brought to you by Burger Barn, Aero Express, Nitro 54 Variety, and Bradshaw Brothers Fuels. It is bound to be a good one, Greg. You look at this racetrack as we see the Strickland's GMC pace truck down in one and two. There's some moist clay down on the inside of turn one, and there's some way up on the outside, almost on the way to the parking lot. And I think we're going to see these cars run every groove in between wherever there's some clean real estate. But I think the big speed is like Glenn Steyer said earlier, the extreme bottom, the extreme top. The starting lineup determined amongst the top drivers in a redraw. I believe it would be the top 10, was it tonight? Top two go to the redraw. So top 10 to the redraw. And if you're all the other competitors... And you look at who drew the pole, like this guy needed any more help. Christopher Bell draws number one. And uh, look for him to be pretty quick right off the start. He's looking for redemption after last night, having a solid handle on the feature event before blowing the right rear tire. So Christopher Bell in that victory games, 67. Is right where he wants to be on the pole position. They say in racing, you're better to be lucky than good. I say you're, you're better to be both. <laughs> Good and lucky is a great combination in this sport. And uh, Christopher Bell going to start from the front. He was at the front last night, and it didn't end well for him. Last night's winner, Rico Aber, has got a lot of work to do coming from the B main. So we'll see what he has. Tony Stewart's had a much better night here tonight than what he had last night. I think this is going to be a racetrack where you can make up some positions. I think there's going to be room out there to ne negotiate traffic. I don't know why. I've just got a feeling I'm going to keep an eye on Mitch Brown and that number 10. I don't know why. I just feel like this is the kind of racetrack where he can excel on. Tonight reminds me, this racing surface reminds me of uh, some of the Canadian Sprint Car Nationals A main tracks that we've seen in the past and they always produce such great racing and to what you said those are the tracks where you can come from deep in the field we've seen it happen before ask Brian Howland in the 51 maybe one of the greatest races we've seen at this track ever was Brian Howland making his run and uh, picking up that win, but there were five drivers on that night that were all there in a pack that could have won. It was arguably the best sprint car race ever run it was. It was a crazy good sprint car race. So Rick Scott in the Strickland Brantford Chevrolet pace truck leads the field around. Get everyone into formation. For our final event of the 2019 Northern Summer Nationals. Want to thank everyone that's tuned in here on All North Racing powered by Pinty's. Those here live in attendance it's been a great two days of action. We couldn't have asked for anything more in that respect. Mother Nature cooperated today. Mother Nature was a race fan today. Yesterday, she threw us some curveballs, gave us some challenges. Kyle McKenzie tells the field it's time to take formation with a four wide salute. They'll all tuck in behind that Strickland GMC pace truck and head down the back stretch. So ladies and gentlemen, we want you on your feet to wave these drivers on, even for those of you at home. Get excited. You're about to see 30 laps of some of the best sprint car racing anywhere. They are four wide and fancy, 
For you, the fans, this is the Cool Kids Ice and Water Core Pack Merchandising Sprint Cars. Backstretch, they're still in formation for you as well. Send these drivers on four wide. A fantastic view. What a field of cars. What a collection of race car drivers this is. And another driver from this A main tonight will punch their ticket into the Canadian Sprint Car Nationals as well. Rico Abreu has a guaranteed starting spot for September 14th here at Oshweekin Speedway. So another driver here tonight could get their name added to the list. How much do you want to bet at least 20 drivers just got on the throttle when they, when they spread out like that and thought, wow, this <laughs> is going to be a handful. I think there's a few of them that embrace it. I think there's a few that are shocked at what they felt, and that's not much grip. Well, we're going to find out next time around. White flag is being displayed. Next time by, we're going green flag racing for 30 laps. Two by two, 13 rows of beautifully prepared sprint cars ready to come to life. Christopher Bell, Scott Cruder on the front row. The Strickland GM pace truck pulls off on the back stretch. Kyle McKenzie with double greens in hand. Ladies and gentlemen, you came looking for a show. Well, here you go. Let's end all the anticipation as we bring to you our feature presentation. They rumble, bumble, stumble down into corners one and two. Christopher Bell and Scott Cruder will lead them down the back stretch for the first time. Good clean start, a little bit of contact off of turn number two in the middle of the pack. Drivers trying to find their groove. We got one car, looked a little bit slow in three and four, back up to speed now. It was Jason Barney in the 87. At the front, it's Christopher Bell over Scott Cruder and Jordan Thomas. Yeah, Jordan Thomas back there in third. Jim Hoopinen had a really good night tonight in that Glenn Styers Racing number zero, and he's got that car hooked up running fourth right now. The top four have pulled away from the fifth place car. I believe that's Joe Trank on the inside of the back straightaway battling with Mark Smith in the 55. Dylan Westbrook in the 47X in that mix as well. He looks to the inside of Tranka. Tranka closes the door down into turn number one. Mitch Brown, you can already see his brake rotor glowing red out there on that blue number 10. Yeah, he gets the nickname downtown Mitch Brown because he likes that lower inside line sometimes. Trouble down off a of corner four for the 13 of Corey Turner. That car will break and pull off into the infield. He'll roll up on a Mr. Transmission victory lane. He is out of harm's way. I believe we will stay under green out in front. Christopher Bell starting to extend that advantage. And Greg, we're only about two laps from lap traffic. Problems for Jim Hoopinen in the Oshweekin Speedway number zero. Oh, what a shame for Jim Hoopinen. Been so strong all night from the heats on out. And he is coasting up the high side of one and will not be able to make it to the pit area. So we're under our first caution flag with five laps up on the scoreboard, 25 left to go. There we see the red rocket. And that is Jim Hoopinen in the Glenn Steyer's own zero machine. How fair is it when two brothers go racing? One of them's nickname is the Fenwick Flyer and the other is Red Rocket, which I can't listen to without giggling just a little bit. Very quickly pushed to the pit area. Not sure if he will need assistance uh, or will need his two minutes in the work area or not. Try and find that out quickly. We'll hope he has good brakes for the speed they were going heading down into the pits. Christopher Bell with lots of top wing cranked into that 67. That top wing just about standing on its nose. Our race leader, as you look through the field, I would say nobody has a, a, their wing pitched quite any more steeply than does Christopher Bell. There's some people that have it pitched as steeply, maybe. 
Now, we've talked a lot about Christopher Bell, how good he is, how well he's attacked this track in the last two days. We haven't talked much about that car. That car is a two-time Canadian Sprint Car Nationals winning car with crew chief uh, Daryl Turford and the Hills Racing Team and all that they do with Parker Price Miller. So Christopher Bell also, although he is an extremely talented driver, uh, and we've seen him really run well. That's still a really good car and a team that knows how to get it done in big races here at Oshweekin. Watching, is that Clinton Jeffrey running through the infield of the racetrack? And that must mean that, that he doesn't run for nothing. So something going on down there that they want to get addressed. Parker Price Miller, the most recent Canadian Sprint Car Nationals winner in 2018. With one of my favorite nicknames in racing, the law firm, Parker Price Miller. Fabulous nickname. So some of these sportsman cars being pulled back to the pit area. They were kind of stuck out in the infield during their race, but now that we have the opportunity with that two-minute work area back in the pits for Jim Hoopinen, it's a good opportunity for the tow trucks to clear the infield of those race cars because I'm sure at some point they'll want to go home. Hoopinen is back on the racetrack. We're going to come to green this time. Doug Leonard, the race director, says lights are out on the pace vehicle. It's time to go. It's been a good marriage, uh, Jim Hoopinen with the Glen Stires Racing Team, two-time champion here at Oshweekin Speedway, and he's been good since picking up that ride about a month ago, and now his brother, Tom Hoopinen, into the pit area. Oh, coming to the green flag, Scott Kruder got a little itchy on the trigger there, and that's going to cost him on that restart. Yeah, getting way out was Christopher Bell. I was watching another mishap deeper into the field. I'm not sure if it was Parry's mishap or Davey Frannick's mishap because they're both number 28. But one of them got out of line coming across the cone for the restart. Just got things bottled up a little bit deep in the field. It shows you how important it is on these restarts to try and get a good jump. And uh, that uh, will be interesting to see if anyone was penalized my thought was maybe it was Poye that uh, got by Frannick and was not supposed to pass him nonetheless Christopher Bell leading he is out in front over Scott Cruder, Jordan Thomas Mark Smith and D dubs Dylan Westbrook has joined the mix well Dylan Westbrook still wants to get some after his problems last night with the wing coming apart on that 47x you know he's going to be up on the wheel as Christopher Bell has opened up an advantage not really driving away though Greg Scott Cruder able to keep him in his sights. Mark Smith back there in third as well. Jordan Thomas. All these drivers are still within striking distance of the race leader. 30 laps is a long sprint car race. Impressive to watch Christopher Bell as he just throws it in on the high side, doing exactly what Glenn Stires was talking about earlier. Go in as far as you possibly can. He just pitches it in with no fear and rim rides it around, already catching the back of the back. That's something you need a lot of confidence in your own ability in the race car and, of course, in the racetrack. Christopher Bell has all of those things working for him tonight as it closes in on Linton Jeffrey and Jamie Turner. Christopher Bell right there in the back end of Linton Jeffrey, and that will cause him to come down the track, split through the two lap cars of Turner and Linton Jeffrey, and down into corner one. And He's increasing his advantage over Scott Cruder, who's now feeling some pressure from Mark Smith, who's going to get a run down corner two and take the second spot away. And Cruder looked like he aggressively slowed up as Jamie Turner in the 11 peels down onto the infield. Looks like his race will be done. Not sure if Cruder had a problem or what he might have been reacting to. Cruder, Smith, Dylan Westbrook right there. Second, third, and fourth. Westbrook in the mix in this one here tonight. Troubles up on the high side, I believe, once again, Jim Hoopinen. Hoopinen way up out of the groove on turn number four, comes to rest on the outside of the racetrack. Hoopinen will wait for the push truck to come and get him. So on the caution here on lap number 12 of 
30 here tonight. Christopher Bell leads over Mark Smith. Scott Cruder third. Dylan Westbrook fourth. Jordan Thomas fifth. Jordan Poirier running right now in sixth. Seventh is Mac DeMann. Eighth is Ryan Turner. Ninth, Max Stambaugh. And tenth, Joe Trenka. Jason Barney back in 11th. Tony Stewart running in 12th. 13th, Steve Poirier. 14th, Rico Abreu. He's made up a lot of track position here. Mitch Brown completes the top 15. You guys not sure what happened to Jim Hoopin. It looks like they locked it back into gear and pushed him off. The other zero machine of Linton Jeffrey retired to the pits on this same caution. Well, that will be a fortunate break for Mark Smith because I believe Linton Jeffrey would have restarted between the race leader Christopher Bell and the 55 of Mark Smith, if I'm not mistaken. Now Smith will have a clear look at the back end of Christopher Bell. Scott Cruder third in the 49, fourth Dylan Westbrook in the 47X and rounding out the top five, Jordan Thomas in the 79. Back to the green flag, and we'll see if things are a little cleaner than the last restart. Work it down the banking. Wow, what a line by Christopher Bell. That was aggressive. Cranked it hard to the left, down the hill, got a run, but not enough to keep Mark Smith from flooring the slider into turn number one. Mark Smith to the lead, Christopher Bell going back to the inside. He'll slide up in front of the 55 to take the lead back. Bell has it, but Smith not going away. The Sunbury, Pennsylvania driver digging down deep on the inside line. Here he comes up in front of Bell. He'll put the slider on. Bell now will look back down low, going down the back, stretching into corner three. Jordan Thomas with a big restart in that 79. Jumped up into the third position. Dylan Westbrook trying to get it back. Another slider by Mark Smith on Christopher Bell. What a battle at the front. Out in front, it's Smith over Bell. Bell gets a great run off of two. Down to the inside he goes. Down to the bottom in corner number three. Now he'll pull the slide jump. But Smith now down back to the bottom. He'll try to return the favor and does. Crossover move by Mark Smith as they reach the halfway point of this 30-lap Northern Summer Nationals feature event. Down the back stretch another time. Mark Smith, he's been so close to victory here, yet has not been able to do it. Christopher Bell wants to keep it that way. Around the outside, Smith shuts the door at the line. What great finesse by both of these drivers. Absolute understanding of where their race car is, where their competitor is, showing a little bit of respect right now. As I think as the laps wind down, you gotta throw that out the window at some point. They might erupt there in turn number four. Wow, you don't get any closer than that without wrecking as Tony Stewart now pulls the 14 off. What a battle at the front. Bell on the outside takes the lead back. Christopher Bell has found something on that exit of turn two where he's able to find some grip and really get a good run. But don't look now. Here comes Dylan Westbrook in the 47X. Yeah, he's right there. And if anyone has a, a better chance of catching these two here locally than Dylan Westbrook, I'm not sure who it would be. He's right there. He can see the top two and he's closed ground now on Mark Smith. Man, he drove that car hard into turn number three. Christopher Bell extending that advantage. Look at the traffic looming for these race leaders. Once they hit this lap traffic, they might stay in it for the rest of this race. Jordan Thomas is right there as well. He's working the inside line. Everyone else in the top five up at the high side of the track. But it, right now is Jordan Thomas making it work on the bottom. Dylan Westbrook in that 47. What a line he is running. What a battle, Christopher Bell is getting away, but the battle for second rages on. Mark Smith in that second position. Right behind him, of course, Jordan Thomas in the 79. Dylan Westbrook in the 47X. So the leader, Christopher Bell, able to pull away in lap traffic here. Mark Smith has a couple of lap cars between he and the leader. And then it's Dylan Westbrook in third, who's trying to hold off Jordan Thomas and Jordan Poyer. Mark Smith's got to find something in that 55. Right now, Christopher Bell doing a great job picking his way through this traffic. He just got around Jared Zimbardi in the 35, right in front of him now. I believe is last night's winner, Rico Abreu in the 24. No, I'm wrong. That's the 10 and Mitch Brown. My mistake. But Rico's not too far from going a lap down. He's about a, a straightaway away from Christopher Bell. So last night's winner struggling here tonight to keep pace with the top five. A vastly different racetrack. Six laps to go this time. Christopher Bell continues to lead. Mark Smith, he is not giving up. 
keeping about the same distance back as he has been the last few laps. He just needs one good break here. Smith has some clear room now. No lap cars between he and the leader. The big high five from Kyle McKenzie. Bell leads him across the line. Smith in second, third. Right now, Dylan Westbrook, fourth, Jordan Thomas, fifth, Jordan Poirier. Jordan Poirier having a nice run. The young driver from Quebec. Giving that 28 machine a good ride. It's Christopher Bell still out in front over Mark Smith. There's nothing between them. No lap traffic between Bell and second place Smith. A few more cars ahead of him. He is not clear of the traffic yet. Going by for the fourth spot is Poyer. It's not Steve though. Jordan Poyer having a fantastic run here tonight. In that 28 car, he is up to the fourth spot tracking down Dylan Westbrook. Christopher Bell on the outside got around here in Turkey. It almost looked like Turkey was about to pass him back as he sails it into three. That is a treacherous corner when you run that hard into the turn. What a slide job for the third position. Jordan Poirier trying to clear Dylan Westbrook. Just about put it in the fence. Wow, that was intense there. Dylan Westbrook remains in third, this time by. White flag comes out for Christopher Bell out of Norman, Oklahoma. One more lap, can he hold off Mark Smith? To the extreme outside in one and two, he's still dealing with traffic, but he's been dealing with it almost all race long. Off of corner three and four, looks like second time is a charm. Ring the bell, Christopher Bell gets the win here at Oshweekin Speedway. Mark Smith second at the line, Dylan Westbrook third, Jordan Poirier fourth, and Jordan Thomas will complete our top five. Max Stambaugh, Steve Poirier, Ryan Turner, Mac DeMann, and Davey Frannick complete the top 10. What a race it was. What a show for these fans. Christopher Bell. It was Sly Job City here at the Big O tonight, Greg. Back and forth with Mark Smith. Sly Jobs, crossovers, maybe a little bit of rubbing at one point, but a whole lot of respect among these race car drivers. And what a feature event. And what a question we've got to pose to young Christopher Bell. He is locked in to the Canadian Sprint Car Nationals in September. Rico Abreu takes home night one, Christopher Bell Gets the win on night two of the Northern Summer Nationals brought to you by Burger Barn, Aero Express, Nitro 54 Variety, and Bradshaw Brother Fuels. The top three head down to Mr. Transmission, Victory Lane. What a top three it is. As Christopher Bell parks the victory games. Hills Racing number 67 down on the concrete pad. And uh, as I said before, this team, no stranger to big money races here at the Big O. Hills Racing, two-time Canadian Sprint Car Nationals winners. And here's Christopher Bell up top, the winner. Here tonight, Clinton Jeffrey down in Mr. Transmission, Victory Lane. Well, Ashwigan Speedway, how about a big? Ashwigan Speedway, Mr. Transmission, Victory Lane, welcome for Christopher Bell. World fireworks lighting up the skies we do every week here. We'll get in here and have a word with Christopher. He works his way around the front of the car. He can hear you now, Ashwikin. How about it for Christopher Bell? Christopher, what a drive here tonight. You gotta be pretty pleased with how uh, the night went, man. Last night you were lightning quick, didn't quite put the finishing touches on it, but tonight you sure did. Yeah, this thing, uh, this thing was a ton of fun to drive. The track is, man, it's awesome whenever it's like that. You could kind of run wherever you wanted to run, so. Both nights had a totally different track, and uh, both of them were really fun to race on. So thank you to Oshweekin Motor Speedway for, or Oshweekin Speedway for bringing me out here. It's uh, a ton of fun to get to go to new places, and, and the guys here with Glenn, and, uh, and, and yeah, Glenn does a great job taking care of me, so thank you. Talk about that run with you and Mark Smith, man. That went on for a long time, slide job after slide job, within inches of each other. Yeah, we were racing pretty close there, and 
I, I felt like if I could ever get my momentum up, I'd be okay. But uh, whenever I saw 55 on the board, I, I knew that this is his deal, you know, really slick. And uh, thankfully, my car was good enough where I could hold him off. There you have it. Chris Trubell gets it done here on All North Racing, powered by Pinties. The big star gets it done. Happy young man down there. And we were uh, very happy to have him here at Oshriken Speedway. Gets the win on night number two. Clinton Jeffrey ready down there with second and third place. Well, we got Mark Smith here. Mark, what a difference 24 hours make, man. You junked a car so bad last night and came back and uh, almost won it tonight with one of the best in the business. You got to be pleased tonight. Yeah, we, uh, we, we were actually pretty good last night. We were just a little too tight, and I put myself in a bad spot last night. And, uh, but, you know, it's the same for everybody. You got to keep it on all fours. Uh, I just want to thank everybody, uh, Patrick and Max and Alex, for helping getting this this backup car out and uh, this thing's just as good as the other one so uh, just want to thank them foundation 55 CSI shocks pixel graphics uh, Hoosier tires rider racing engines I just uh, the, the whole deal and it's a pretty pretty good race there with Bell for a while I thought I had him I just needed to be in traffic so I could keep him back there because uh, I thought I found something there in the middle and I gave him the top and he actually got back going again on the top. I probably should have just went up there, but uh, you just you just never know when you pass somebody through the middle, and then you won't, you don't think you can get them back up the top. But uh, it was a good race. We have Mark Smith second. Also with me is Dylan Westbrook. Dylan third tonight. Again, another guy whose luck changed in 24 hours. You were fast last night as well, but tonight you almost got it done. What kept you from catching these top two, Dylan? Was it starting deep in the pack? Oh uh, yeah, the third position definitely uh, affected a little bit. Just had to take a bit more time to get up to him, but uh, yeah. But we could have just been a bit tighter with the car. Just, uh, just more experience on tracks like this. But uh, I think this really helped us out for the nationals later on in the year. So uh, I think really good though. But uh, really good competition with uh, Bell and uh, Mark Smith here. Like uh, some of the best guys when it comes to tracks like this. Thanks, Dylan. There you have it, guys. Our top three, Christopher Bell, Mark Smith, and Dylan Westbrook get it done. Two absolutely fantastic nights here for the Northern Summer Nationals Hour Week. I want to thank everybody who made this happen, and thanks to you guys for doing a great job. That's all from Trackside. Great job down Trackside, uh, Clinton Jeffrey, as always, and uh, some happy drivers down there. And When you come home third place behind Mark Smith and, and Christopher Bell, that's still a pretty good night for Dylan Westbrook and uh, made a name for himself. Absolutely. What a great show. What a great drive these guys put on. Guys and gals, phenomenal racing. We saw eight fantastic feature events. What a show. The cream rises to the top, and we saw the best of the best, Greg. We're going to have a look at a highlight package from, the, uh, from this week's races, a minute and a half of all the action we've seen over the last two nights.